Last like 45 minutes, you gave excellent speech on it, like you know, Hindutva, all this, and what is Dharma, what is you know, like Sanatana Dharma, all this. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot to meet you in Columbia University, in New York City. So, can you brief a little bit about you know the way the worries, like you know, like uh, I am in US for several years. I see this culture here. They are really like you no know, passionate about Hindu culture, yes. Indian culture. Yes. But when I go back, yes. Where I see like they're more attracting towards the Western, Western culture. Exactly. So how do you address that? And you know, see, this is a fantastic question. But I think what's happened is not just uh, that distance increases fondness. It's something more profound. I think that uh, in this society, many Indians who are very well qualified and hardworking have done very well for themselves. And when they've done well, they've also understood the richness of their own culture. Whereas in India, many people are still deeply colonized. And that is why I feel, as somebody who studied here and already had moved out of the straight jacket of uh, that narrow-minded Indian approach because of living here for several years, I think the diaspora and all you people have an immense role to play to boost the confidence of a generation or two of Indians by saying, you know, guys, you got it wrong. And I think that what's also happening is because of Narendra Modi, there's a huge difference all over India because now people have a greater pride, a greater sense of confidence. And this has come from one simple thing, that on the one hand, we've got better governance than almost ever before. And the second thing is the corruption has, in, has decreased. Because if you're a corrupt society, you become ashamed of yourself. And you begin to think that, look, this is what we are. And therefore, to come back to your question, I think that what you've seen here, that immense pride, people send their children for Bharatanatyam, you know, shloka chanting. So, they, so many, so many activities so many related to culture, that right? Also gradually happen in India, because the second aspect of this is to have some degree of material prosperity, which is also happening in India. In 20 or 30 years, I think at least the middle class has come a long way and now with that surplus income, and also with the economy in the world kind of shrinking, Europe and elsewhere, I think this is a great moment for India to actually uh, manifest its own uh, inner genius as well as its destiny, you know. So, Andy, like a generic question about you, like, you know, like being a professor here, you know, how do you feel and where we are, and you know, like, you know, like, for even for like, you know, like Indian society here, yes. so how do we mingle with other society in, in such a way that you no, know, like, uh, we should not be negative to other one, but you know, like, what, how do we uh, pass that message? See, again, when I was a student, I was very active in the Indian Cultural Association at Urbana Champaign, and what I learned is our community is so strong, it's a wonderful community. And if we work together, there's nothing we can't achieve. I'm talking about overseas Indians. And unfortunately, the flip side is even here, we are divided into so many groups. And there's been a very sad kind of partition overseas where only the Hindu groups come together and hardly any Muslims are a part of it. So there are some deep things to think about, you know. But certainly, I think that, uh, you know, keeping very strong ties with India and building uh, very strong ties with the host culture and country, participating in school board elections, in, in the political process, making our voice known, being registered Democrats, Republicans, you know, making temples, not just the centers of faith, and Shraddha and Asta, but also of intellectual and cultural activities. To some extent, cultural activities happen, but I think our temples have a great potential. And then investing in academic Hinduism. You know, Hinduism has to be studied rigorously in the academy, uh, and uh, this will really revitalize, because in today's knowledge society, you know, temple going is one thing, but you need to produce very, uh, you know, top of the line, cutting edge knowledge about your own traditions, because it's very competitive out there. And unfortunately, we have outsourced it, as with the Murti Library, to foreigners. They are going to tell us who we are. And I think we should advise our friends, 
that when you're investing, make a great fund for Indian culture and get the best people to put out the best texts and commentaries and make it also in English so that younger people who may not know Sanskrit or even their own languages can understand. And I think this will go a long way uh, to creating greater awareness and let people all over the world, Christians, Muslims, you know, Jewish people, other people, uh, know more and more about Hinduism. Let them know what we have to offer, not just stories or not just caste or whatever, but let them see the grandness, the, the, the you know, uh, the lofty heights of uh, human imagination that were there in our traditions. And uh, when we convey to them, I think they'll say, wow, this is amazing. You know? Gopakrishna, JKTB. So today, you guys arranged this program, right? Can you brief a little bit about you know, how Hindutva and when especially like, you know, like arranging with the professor and the great speech. So like what exactly motive behind this and then how you guys did all this? So Nehaji. So I think uh, the reason we actually ended up doing this talk, one of the major reasons is that, you know, we need space to discuss and debate our ideas. We are not here to impose. We are not, you know, talking about something very absurd or something very provocative. But one of the very important things in nation building is to have a debate. And you can't have a debate if everybody agrees with you. Right? So, the, which is why the whole idea to bring these people here, like in India, you know, uh, most of, if you don't follow the narrative, you're sidelined. Now, Professor Paranjpe, all up to all of this time, like he has, he has several accolades, but you will only know him for the JNU controversy. So that is that needs to change. You know, our voices need to be heard, and that is exactly what we are trying to do here by bringing in, um, you know, ideologues um, who can express their ideas, and then we can have a debate about whether it's the right thing or wrong thing or what what it, its impact is. So, um, if you look at the narrative as what she said, uh, there is always there is this notion about negativity always you know travels much faster than light. Right? The positive thing is what Indic Book Club wants to bring to the, uh, the forum is to bring very strategic thinkers, ideologues and uh, people who have immense contribution to the positivity aspect of it. Like what you heard him talk on all the aspects of what all e ecological things to the entire humanity that Hinduism can bring. That is the exact context what we want to really bring without any, you know, getting into the narrative and the debates, what you said, uh, people try to, you know, heckle and all that. Uh, barring all that uh, rhetorics, this is exactly where we want to concentrate. How you can be pr uh, proud about your identity as a Hindu, how you could really uh, be, you know, proud about your civilization and what are all the things that you could contribute very positively to the humanity. That is exactly what the focus of the Indic Book Club is. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Do you want to say anything? Uh, sure, I would want to just add to what uh, Nehaji and Ganesh have already said by adding that it's also about viewing the world with an Indic lens. So, so far we have been limited by a Western worldview. It has its own merits, uh, it has its own uh, positives, uh, no doubt about that. But it's also essential that not only do we take control of our own narrative, but also start to examine the world with different lenses in addition to the Western one. It doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. And I think the Indic Book Club and events like these serve that purpose very well. So that would be my two cents on it. It looks like it's an excellent opportunity in Columbia University in New York where they gave opportunity to students and even for the community to open up and interact with Mr. Professor to talk about Hindu reviving and then how strong we are. So thank you so much. Gopi Krishna, GKTV. The thing she said is she works, uh, on, among other things, on a river called Meander. Do you know that Meander was a river or is a river? Uh, we know that we meander through things, but uh, apparently we share television channels, so for two hours we were on the road. Hi, come on in. So it's been a very busy day and in many ways an interesting day for me to meet a lot of you for the first time and uh, I've learned quite a bit because one of the things that uh, has been, uh, should I say, so gratifying and affirming for me during the all that belief system. So the real problem is, and this is why I've come here and I support some of these uh, uh, movements, including the RSS. I must say I support the RSS. So that nobody, if you want to brand me a Sanghi, that's fine. Uh, so why? Because 
you see the reasons this. Let me explain that when you come to that fourth category, the anti sanatan then what happens? Then you must also have, you see our gods and goddesses, they have Ugra root. You know that? <laughs> you know, like that. Then they become the Saumya root. Saumya root means they're very benign. Like Lakshmi is always very benign. You know, Durga, and some are very Ugra, like Chandi, you know. So this is, you know, this is not just myth making or, you know, or whatever you want to call it. It's a very deep, it's a very deep thought. So we shouldn't, I don't think Sanatani should become Ibrahimic. We shouldn't semanticize. But for some time, you may need to do that. But then again, you should never lose your own sattva, your own essence. That you should never lose. But that Ugra Rup Dharan Karni ki bhi avashakta Like you did, Ugra Rup Dharan Karni ki bhi <laughs> Asuri Tattva Bhagya. Totally. It's a joke.